The community mourning a mother and two-year-old boy who died in a fall at Petco Park. The investigation this morning into that fall that police are calling suspicious. President Biden has now received his COVID booster shot, but many still have questions about the rollout as health experts continue to try to reach the unvaccinated. California's eviction moratorium is coming to an end in just a few days. The help coming to San Diegans who are still struggling to pay their rent. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Hello, thanks for joining us, you guys. I'm Virginia Cha. Today, we are pressing San Diego police for any updates on the investigation into the deadly fall at Petco Park over the weekend. A woman and her two-year-old son died after falling from Petco Park's third floor, and investigators are calling that fall suspicious. Let's get to ABC 10 News reporter Rena Nakano, who joins us live from downtown. Rena, a memorial there has been growing. Yeah, that's right, Virginia. Community members came here last night to leave stuffed animals, flowers, and balloons to pay their respects to the 40-year-old woman and her two-year-old son who died. It all happened just before the Padres Braves game began on Saturday afternoon at around 3.50. Uh, San Diego police saying officers arrived to the sidewalk of 200 Tony Gwynn Way to find a 40 year old Caucasian woman and her two year old son with fatal injuries. It's uncertain if they jumped, fell or were pushed off the third floor concession area. We just do not know the circumstances just yet, but police say their deaths appear to be suspicious. So homicide detectives are called out to investigate. Earlier, we spoke to Shane Harris, civil rights advocate and longtime friend of Tony Gwynn's widow. He said she wished to share her condolences to the family. This is tragic. Uh, in any light, uh, the Gwynn family would probably, uh, under these circumstances, even if it wasn't on Tony Gwynn Drive, but because it ended up on Tony Gwynn Drive, it's just, it's just deeply tragic. Uh, and the Gwynn family certainly feels the pain uh, for this family and, and, and sends their condolences. Now, the identities of the woman and her son have not been made public yet, but we do know that they are San Diego residents. Homicide detectives are still investigating this incident. They are hoping to find evidence and speak with potential witnesses. So if you have any information, you are asked to call San Diego police. In downtown, I'm Rena Nakano, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Rena. We'll take a look. This is the moment President Biden rolled up his sleeve to receive his COVID-19 booster shot this morning. The president taking the time to get that shot while also stressing the importance of boosters following the CDC and FDA's recommendation that allows millions of Americans to now get their booster shots. But as ABC's Dan Lieberman explains, many people still have questions about how to go about doing that. Booster shots are going into arms across the country after the CDC recommended them for medically vulnerable Americans, including seniors, those who work in high-risk occupational settings, and immunocompromised individuals. I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to get the booster. These are just for Pfizer recipients. If you received a different vaccine... We haven't forgotten you. If you've gotten Moderna and J&J, &J, we will, with similar urgency, address um, boosters for those populations, as well as um, looking at the science and data for mix and matching. The next phase in the country's vaccine rollout involves kids ages 5 to 11. Pfizer expects to submit data for regulatory review in a matter of days, with authorization expected as soon as the end of October. The dose would be about a third of what adults get. If they approve it, we will be ready with our manufacturing to provide this new formulation of the vaccine. A priority is still inoculating an estimated 70 million eligible Americans who remain unvaccinated. We're trying to do the what is at the best interest of our families. The majority of the nurses that I have spoken to that remain unvaccinated are sticking to their guns. Tricia Sebastian is among 72,000 health workers in New York who face a midnight deadline to be vaccinated or risk losing their jobs. There's a similar mandate for New York City public school employees. A judge has put it on hold, but Asia Levystone would rather lose her job than get the shot. I'm going to be terminated. It's going to be my last day. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is preparing to bring in extra staff. Even the National Guard should hospitals need the help. The mayor of New York City says there's an army of vaccinated substitutes ready to take over city classrooms if they're needed. 
Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Tomorrow, the San Diego Unified School District will talk about the possibility of requiring students to get vaccinated against COVID-19 if they're eligible. Now, this will be coming after Los Angeles Unified mandated vaccinations for students ages 12 and up. Many local parents say they're looking forward to the upcoming discussion. Well, I do appreciate that they are putting that out there and giving notice. Parents need that transparency. The reason for the meeting is to discuss and to get parents to weigh in, but no decision will be made tomorrow. Currently, San Diego Unified requires masks, proper ventilation and sanitation stations inside classrooms. The board expected to meet tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. Well, the return to a pre-pandemic life is what many have been waiting for, and Pfizer's CEO says that could happen soon. In an interview, Albert Borla said that reality could be possible within the year. He did stress that yearly vaccinations for COVID-19 would likely be necessary as new variants continue to emerge. Moderna's CEO predicted a similar timeline in a recent interview. U.S. health officials say they are confident there is enough supply for both booster shots and shots for younger children when those are authorized. The number of vaccine doses available currently sits at over 40 million. At this point, health officials say more than 70 million Americans are not vaccinated. Here in San Diego, 78 percent of the eligible population is fully vaccinated. 87 percent have received at least one dose. Some new developments this morning for the man who tried to assassinate President Ronald Reagan four decades ago. A judge granted John Hinckley Jr. unconditional release from all restrictions imposed on him as long as he follows court-issued rules and remains stable. Those rules include no contact with Reagan's children, other victims, and their families. He's also barred from having a gun. Hinckley left a mental hospital in 2016, and the judge says Hinckley has not displayed any symptoms of active mental illness, violent behavior, or interest in weapons since 1983. The judge said the plan is to release him from all court supervision in June.